Okay, folks, so I've adopted this uh, Behringer B115W. Uh, somebody obviously was throwing it out because, uh, let's just plug this in and see how it plays. Uh, so we've got some flashing lights. It looks like the, uh, the actual power supply itself is sort of fine, but perhaps the uh, output transistors or some part of the actual amplifier itself is loading up the power supply. Um, uh, from what I can tell from the internet, the startup circuit for the switch mode power supply is probably okay. So I'm going to uh, look at perhaps if it has output transistors, I might rip those out and uh, see how we go. I just thought we would um, record those, uh, the, the behavior at the moment, just in case I manage to fix it. So here's a look at the uh, components. Uh, from what I can tell, this is the 240 volt input stage. DC uh, rectifier, full bridge rectifier. Um, so I'm assuming that this is all the high voltage stuff here and uh, we come across here to the low voltage and this is probably the somewhere around here, the output stage of the, the two, I'm assuming there's two separate amps in here for the mid range and for the woofer. Um, I, I, I'm assuming it's some sort of D class or K class or some weird hybrid uh, for it to be able to crank out as much power as it's advertised. I think it's 700 watts. I think that's a little bit optimistic. But um, yeah, may, maybe if they're using some clever electronics. I thought we might just zoom in to have a good look. Okay, so we've got some focus happening. This is more for my benefit than anything, just in case I can't work out where some components go after I've played with it. So obviously this is uh, the input section of the board with USB interface and uh, Bluetooth connectivity. Um, it'd be handy to have around the house if I could get this thing going. Okay, so I've decided to tap into some key locations. So that uh, should be the supply rail there that we've tapped into. Uh, we're looking at it on a oscilloscope. See it's uh, sort of hovering around 20 volts RMS. I think that should be up around 60, 80 maybe, probably 60 volts. Um, I've also tapped off of the optocoupler. I, the voltage across it seems sort of similar so I'm pretty sure that's getting some, uh, getting some signal that it should be sampling to feed back to the power supply. So I've been assuming that it's the amplifier stages that have been pulling down the power supply. So what I've decided to do is disconnect the uh, power supply from the from the amplifier stages. I've just kind of sliced through the track here and also up here. It's the negative and positive and the common I've sliced through here with a blade. I've connected both rails up to a 180 ohm variable resistor. Uh, when we power it up, this is what we get. Looking at the scope. So uh, as it turns out, it's not the amplifier stages at all. It's pulling down the power supply. Looks like we have a faulty power supply. So something I found interesting. If we disconnect the positive rail, go into the, um, the variable resistor, we can see that eventually, the power supply goes into regulation, plug back in that resistor and we're good. We're all good and I can um, variable the resistance and pull an amp through the uh, through that power supply. Uh, I've loaded it up, there's an amp, let's see. We've got an amp running through there uh, according to the multimeter and I can sort of increase that a little bit. I don't want to go too far because I'm worried that uh, nothing's heat sunk at the moment so we might do some damage but anyway as you can see the um, power supply stays in it was quite happy there uh, those supply rails just quite happy sitting at um, plus or minus approximately 35 volts once uh, yeah they're both sitting at 36 I'm assuming that's where they're supposed to be regulating uh, so I'm going to continue uh, fault finding and seeing if I can find any faulty components in the power supply stage, particularly the positive rail, because that's the one uh, that I need to disconnect before it goes into regulation. I I'm guessing that the positive rail is also the one that the um, feedback is coupled from via that optocoupler. So um, uh, it's a mystery to me. I'm going to progress, continue on. 
So I've been having a close look at this uh, schematic for the power supply. Uh, we're trying to solve the puzzle of why it uh, doesn't go into regulation. It's as though it needs just a little bit more time. Uh, so something something's not happening quick enough, it seems, and this uh, regular this PWM regulator chip is uh, shutting down or restarting. Uh, so while it was running before, I measured the um, the, the uh, the supply to VCC when it was not regulating it was like between 8 and 9 volts and when it once it came into regulation it was 13.8 volts I looked at the uh, the data sheet for this uh, chip and um, VCC minimum is 10 volts so I uh, I thought perhaps that's uh, the problem and it's not getting the power supply that it needs and it just goes into a boot loop so I pulled out uh, this capacity here and this capacity here, which I thought might be responsible for um, for the slow uh, startup of that part of the circuit. And lo and behold, if we uh, have a look at this, hopefully that focuses. This camera's doing a terrible job at focusing. So we measure, this is C2. And that one's not too bad, but got a horrible ESR. And if we look at C7, these are supposed to be 47 microfarads, both of these. If we look at C7, get a, a look at that one. C7 comes in at a horrible 3.5 microfarads. So if we grab a capacitor, one we prepared earlier, one that's uh, nice and fresh and Give it a test. It comes in at a nice healthy 46.5 microfarads, somewhere around where it should be. So I'm going to replace both of those capacitors and see how we go. Those two capacitors oops, have been replaced. These two guys here and here. Uh, just got a bit of a load which just, the clip just came off. Okay, I think we're back on. Uh, so yeah. Powering on now, we get it going instantly into regulation and regulating it. What have we got there? 35 and a half, 36 volts. Looks like it's fixed. I'm going to go through the rest of the board and have a look at those other capacitors of the same brand because uh, they're all looking a little bit sus. So I replaced those capacitors, a uh, bit of thermal paste, put everything back together, rejoined those sections of the circuit board that I had cut through to do part of the diagnosing and now when we power it on it looks kind of like that so no more flashing lights um, Bluetooth pairing seems to work all right and uh, should be good to go don't want to hit one of those YouTube thanks to all those other YouTubers that have posted their stuff giving me the confidence to do the same do some repairing hopefully this may be of use to somebody else out there or at least help them diagnose something that's up with the Behringer. See you later. Uh, up, up next is uh, the disassembly that might be useful for somebody